Hey guys, welcome back to the final portion of my tutorial. So today we're actually going to be utilizing Adobe Photoshop. We're going to be creating some still and cover images for the video. Usually I like to make one that lives on YouTube and is the cover image and one that I can use for posting to socials like Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. So I actually already selected my three favorite moments in the video. I'm going to be combining two of them to make an image and then the third image is going to be standalone. So the image that I'll probably use for the YouTube cover is this image right here of them interacting for the first time. And I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate that layer. With YouTube, I usually like to incorporate some sort of text on the image so people know right off the bat what it's about. But first I'm going to edit the image itself. So I've duplicated my layer here and I'm seeing that there's a lot of shadows that are distracting around the chin area. So I'm actually going to take my patch tool here, go around the areas that I want to fix, drag and drop. That way it feels more evenly lit. And I'm also going to do the same around the eye area. And any other distracting shadows I see I'm going to eliminate as well. So now I want to bring out a curves layer. I love working in curves in both video and photo because I feel like it gives you so much control over the mid-tone shadows and highlights of an image. My work is notoriously very punchy on the highlights, so we're going to bring the mid-tones up just a bit. So that's great as a general color correction. Now we're going to work with layer masking. So I'm making another curves layer and I'm going to dramatically push up the highlights here because what I'm doing is trying to bring out the hair a little bit more. So we're going to create a layer mask and if you've never used layer masks before I highly suggest looking up some tutorials about it because it is a lifesaver and you can apply it to pretty much anything. So now I'm just painting in exactly where I want that adjustment layer to come through. So just popping those highlights so it's a little bit dramatic. Because when people are looking at this thumbnail, it's probably going to be this size, so it has to really captivate whoever is passing by it. I'm also going to do the same on his shoulders. And I love the detail that this stock footage has. Now that I've accentuated all of my highlights, I'm going to go in and do the same thing for the shadows. So what I'm going to try and accomplish here is there's a lot of shadows on the side of his face and I want to match that to Psyche's character. So again, we're going to dramatically bring it down. We're going to fill the mask layer black so it doesn't show up. And we're going to use our brush tool and brush in exactly where we want the shadows to come through. The reason I do this is because it's a non-destructive workflow. Like if I wanted to undo all of this, I could, and it's not affecting the original image. I'm already getting a slight glow effect from the light on his shoulders, so I'm just going to enhance that by taking a new layer, going to my brush tool, selecting white, and I'm just going to dramatically throw in exactly where I want the highlights to happen. Bring my opacity down. And now I'm actually going to take that layer and add a blur to it. So it would be really cool to do a motion blur because I'm imagining almost like a descending light from above. So as you can see it adds just a little bit of angelicness to it. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my text layer. I'm choosing Times New Roman because it's classic and timeless. And I actually want to make the letters glow a little bit as well, so I'm going to duplicate the layer. And on the bottom layer, I'm going to go into my Gaussian Blur. And the great thing about Photoshop is there's a million ways to do anything you want to do. That's just my way. So zooming out here, I think I just want to add one more color adjustment. I'm going to go to my selective color, select neutrals. So this is controlling all the neutral colors in the image. And we're going to add a little bit of yellow. And just that little touch made it very painterly. I'm also going to go into my blacks here. 
And similar to how we did in the video, we added a little bit of green to the shadows for the underpainting effect. We're also going to do that in this image, and we're actually going to do it with yellow. You see how that immediately created a lot of depth, especially in the clothing? And just like that, I believe we're done with the first image. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So now that we're done with our cover image, I want to make one more image that I can post on socials that has a little bit more variety. So I've brought in my two favorite images. And we're going to be compositing them together. So I've got this image of Psyche and this image of Cupid. We're going to start with Cupid. And I know I want them to be in the same space similar to our last image. So I'm going to make him a bit smaller. I think it might actually be interesting since there is a floating essence in the video to make her appear floating in this still. Now I'm going to go in and do a little light skin retouching. I'm noticing Cupid looks a little bit on the pink side, so I'm going to add a selective color, create a clipping mask, and add some yellow. I'm also going to desaturate it so he appears a little bit more stone-like. And I'm going to show you a slightly different way to get that glow effect. I'm going to create a composite layer here. It merges everything together and flattens the image, but you still have your entire workflow below. I'm going to duplicate that. And just like with my text in the last one, I'm going to go to the bottom layer and add a motion blur. You can see in the preview here what exactly it'll be doing. I love what's happening with the face here. And what's great about this is we can actually add a layer mask and paint in exactly where we want the motion to happen. So I'm just using the brush tool in the color black on my mask and anything that I paint black will show through. I'm going to add one last selective color layer, similar with our last image, just adding a little bit of warmth to everything. Last but not least, I'm going to bring out some of those highlights with a curve adjustment layer. And just like that, we are done with the image. So I'm going to go ahead and export that as well. So I'm now finished with all of my deliverables and I'm ready to share it with the world. I'll probably be releasing Cupid and Psyche on my YouTube channel sometime this week, as well as my Instagram. So make sure to check it out and see the final product. I had a blast with partnering with Adobe, and this project was a lot of fun and super creatively stimulating. Thank you all for joining me on this tutorial series, and make sure to check out Adobe Stocks Library to enhance your own personal projects. See you later!